Greece get a great club to send in our uniform. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that you can't get it anywhere else lately. Like, I don't know.
morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at beautiful Savior Evangelical Lutheran Church. Today, as we see how our Lord encourages us to use our gifts and all that he has given us wisely and to his glory, we also take comfort in his blessed promise that wherever two or three come together in his name, he is truly there with us. This morning we follow the order of service. Service of the word is found in your service folder. And we begin with our opening hymn, hymn 249. us to love and serve him as his dear children, but we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
O Lord, your ears are always open to the prayers of your humble servants, who come to you in Jesus' name. Teach us to always ask according to your will, that we may never fail to obtain the blessings you have promised. Through your, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. The first lesson for our consideration this morning written for us in Genesis chapter 39. When Joseph was brought down to Egypt, Potiphar, the Egyptian, who was an officer of Pharaoh and a captain of the guard, brought Joseph, bought Joseph from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down to Egypt. The Lord was with Joseph, and he became successful. He served in the house of his master, the Egyptian. His master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made everything he touched a success. Joseph found favor in his sight. Joseph served him, and he made Joseph manager of his household. He put Joseph in charge of everything. From that time, from the time that Potiphar made him a manager of his household, in charge of everything he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's household for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord rested on everything he had, both in the house and in the fields. So he left Joseph in charge of everything he had. He did not concern himself with anything except the food that he ate. This is the word of the Lord. We join now in singing our psalm of the day, Psalm 92. Our second lesson from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Now, these things took place as examples to warn you, to warn us not to desire evil things the way they did. Do not become idolaters like some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and got up to celebrate wildly. 
and let us not commit sexual immorality, as some of them did, and in one day 23,000 fell. Let us not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and so were being destroyed by the serpents. And do not grumble, as some of them grumbled and were destroyed by the destroyer. All these things that were happening to them had meaning as examples, and they were written down to warn us to whom the end of the ages has come. So now, let him who thinks he stands be careful that he does not fall. No testing has overtaken you except ordinary testing. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tested beyond your ability. But when he tests you, he will also bring about the outcome that you are able to bear it. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Latin lesson written for us in Luke chapter 16. Jesus also said to his disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager who was accused of wasting his possessions. The rich man called him in and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management, because you can no longer be a manager. The manager said to himself, What will I do? since my master is taking away the management position from me. I'm not strong enough to dig. I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I will do, so that when I am removed from my position as manager, people will receive me into their houses. He called each one of his master's debtors to him. He asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He said, Six hundred gallons of olive oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and write three hundred. Then he said to another, How much do you owe? And he said, Six hundred bushels of wheat. And he said to him, Take your bill and write down four hundred and eighty. The master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the children of light. I tell you, make friends for yourselves with unrighteous mammon so that when it runs out, they will welcome you into the eternal dwellings. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We join now in singing our hymn of the day, hymn 390.
Please rise. May the God of hope fill you with complete joy and peace as you continue to believe so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here again, words written for us in Genesis chapter 39. The Lord was with Joseph, and he became successful. He served in the house of his master, the Egyptian. From the time that Potiphar made him manager of his household in charge of everything that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's household for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord rested on everything he had, both in his house and in the fields. So he left Joseph in charge of everything he had, and he did not concern himself with anything but the food that he ate. You may be seated. My fellow servants of the Almighty God, when you think of being at work in God's blessing, you probably don't think about my life. You probably imagine having large flocks and herds and plenty of green pastures or working your own land, plowing and sowing and reaping an abundant harvest, maybe a large and prosperous family. Perhaps you're a tradesman. And so you think of making something with your hands and forming and fashioning it into something both beautiful and useful so that your reputation can spread far and wide. When you think of being at work in God's blessing, there is something that you picture in your mind. But it isn't my life. Except I hope to show you today that it is. When I think of how I got here, I shake my head. See, I was my dad's favorite. The son of his favorite wife. And so from the time that I was very little, he gave me everything he possibly could. He took me under his arm. He showed me all that he had, all that he had earned. He shared with me the secrets of his success and how I lived. I was so eager to make him happy. And then I had these dreams. Those dreams were so vivid and real, they seemed like they were prophetic. And in these dreams, my whole family, my older brothers, even my own dad, they all bowed down to me. Oh, how I loved that thought. It was hard for me not to let those things go to my head. After all, I was young. I was clever like my father. I was witty. Everything I seemed to do was a great success. But I wasn't yet very wise. My brothers sneered whenever they saw me. They had scorn in their voices whenever they mentioned Daddy's darling son, Joseph. So perhaps I should have been ready and prepared. When Father sent me to go check on my brothers in the far northern pastures and they saw me strutting like a peacock in my stunning coat, they wanted to kill me. As I sat in the bottom of that muddy cistern, I heard them plotting my fate. Reuben wasn't all that fond of me, but he loved my father, and so I heard him pleading on my behalf. But my cries from the pit, they brought no pity, but they brought laughter. I heard my brothers say, we can never let him go back. The first thing he'll do, he'll go and run and tell Father what we have done. 
He'll use this against us. He can't go back. I wondered what they were going to do to me. Then a caravan passed by. Soon they were hauling me out of the pit. They bound my wrists behind me. They haggled for my price, my value. They sold me. I looked back one last time, and the last I saw my family, they were tearing my beautiful coat apart and dipping it in the blood of a goat, telling morbid jokes about what might possibly happen to me. I had an idea of what my life was going to look like. I thought I had a destiny for greatness. I was sold as a slave. The captain of Pharaoh's own guard, a rich Egyptian named Potiphar, bought me. Instead of learning my father's trade and learning under his Loving I, I worked in the house of a man who cared nothing about me. I thought I knew what my future would be. I thought I knew what I would be working for. But now that was all gone. What were those dreams now? Here I am in this household, a slave. And I will probably remain in this house for life. Now, I don't see any fellow servants out here, but the other servants in my house, they lived by this maxim, don't get noticed. Yes, do your work and do it as well as you can to avoid getting the rod, but that's about it. Don't work too fast or you just get more work. Don't work so hard and draw attention to yourself and stand out because that just draws more scrutiny. That just draws more responsibility. Just go along to get along. Don't stand out. Just do your job. Now, does that sound right? to you because it didn't sound right to me from the time I was little my father took me under his arm and he told me Joseph Joseph your gifts your abilities your wits wits that if I'm honest are much like mine your wits your knowledge Everything you are and everything you have, all your opportunities, they come from the Lord. And so serve the Lord and do your best whatever you are doing. You don't know where this life will leave you. I'm trying to give you the best life that I can, he told me. But you don't know where your journey will go. He reminded me about how hard he worked for the love of my mother. Rachel, he showed me his flocks and he told me how hard he worked and all the things he did to have them grow and be so prosperous. He taught me to do my best. And so now even though my dreams seem to be shattered and gone, and I doubt they'll ever come true. Now, even though I serve in the house of a foreigner, even though I don't seem to have much future ahead of me, what can I do but my best? For the Lord has placed me here. The Lord has given me these abilities. The Lord has been with me. And so, at His, work, at his blessing, I work. And I'll serve with my best. And so how about you? Perhaps your journey isn't taking you exactly where you thought it would go. Perhaps you're serving, and I don't think you call yourself servants, you say things like employee. Perhaps you're serving in a place you didn't imagine, in a foreign place where people don't care about you and certainly don't care about God. 
but the Lord has given you your abilities, your knowledge, your wits, your opportunities. The Lord has placed you where He desires you to be. And just as I don't know how the Lord will use me in my current position, so also you don't always see what God's plan is for you in your life. It may not be what you imagined, but be whatever it may as a husband, a wife, a child, a worker, a servant, a volunteer, a citizen. No matter what that future may hold, you know what your task is today. To serve with your best. Because the Lord, the Lord does not make mistakes with your life. And so he has placed you where you need to be. And he has given you exactly what you need. You are always in every place at work with God's blessing. So serve with your best. You know, even though I was a young man, it didn't take long for Potiphar to notice that my best was his success. And so just as they had warned me, I started getting more work, more responsibilities, and I applied my best to them too, and the Lord gave those things success until finally as I moved up, Potiphar made me manager of everything in his household. I had that home running like clockwork. Nothing in the house was out of place. In the fields, with his flocks and his crops, Everything was prospering. His accounts were all in order. And Potiphar, he stopped worrying about any of it. He didn't even check on me anymore. He had his business with Pharaoh and the guard. He concerned himself only when he was home with what he ate. He wouldn't let a foreigner touch his food. But everything else... He trusted with me. He trusts everything with me. And the Lord grants success to everything that I do. Everything I touch seems to improve and get better and better. And yet, I gain nothing. It feels like I'm running up a sand dune the sand sliding out as I try each stride. Sometimes I slip and fall and I have to start all over again. And then when you run all that way and you run as hard as you can, what do you find? You're at the top of a sand dune. In the middle of the desert, you're nowhere. You've gained nothing for all of that work. I work and I work and I have nothing to show for it. All of my labor, all of my work, it goes to my master. What's left for, for me. So why should I keep working? Why would I keep running if I get no place? Why would I keep trying to get success if that success never returns to me? Is it for a better life? Uh, more comforts than the rest of the servants? Maybe that sometime in the future I might possibly be able to win my freedoms? No. It's in the trust of the Lord. You see, I know not only has the Lord placed me here and given me this work to do, but I trust the Lord and what He has promised. The Lord has promised our common ancestor, Adam, that he would send the one who would save us all from our sins. The Lord saved Noah from the flood and he established a covenant with all of his descendants. The Lord spoke to my great-grandfather Abraham and told him that all nations of the earth would be blessed through him. Even before my grandfather Isaac was born, God repeated that promise about him on that mountaintop. 
The Lord redeemed my grandpa Isaac with the blood of a ram. And he promised Abraham and Isaac that their children would be like the stars in the sky and the sands and the sea. And that the Lord would bless them and keep them always. The Lord appeared to my father Jacob when he ran from home. And he said he would be with him and his family forever. The Lord was with him and the Lord did bless him. And when my father returned home, he himself wrestled with God and God blessed him. Now, none of them saw the full fulfillment of these promises, but God kept blessing them and kept them in that promise. And that promise has also been given to me. And so I will work with all of my diligence. I will work trusting in a reward that's more than for this life but a reward that was promised to all those who trust in God. I serve, I work in God's blessing, trusting in God's promise. Now, none of you would be here or would be watching on these strange devices you have in the back of your building here if you too hadn't heard the promises of God. Perhaps, you know better than I do. You might even know how my story ends, how the Lord has used me down here in Egypt in this situation to be a part of his promise to my family. But more than that, you know the Savior. You know the Savior by more than a promise. You know the Savior by history. And from him you have received the forgiveness of sins. From him you have received the promise of salvation. From him you have received that promise of a salvation, of a promised land, of a rest that will never end. From him you know that your reward goes beyond anything you might possibly earn here and now. But your reward comes from the Lord. And that your works, your deeds, which you do to glorify the Lord, they follow you not just in this life, but in the life to come where the Lord will give you a crown of glory above all. And so, as I have, I encourage you to work in the Lord's blessing, trusting in the Lord's promise. So work confidently, Work diligently. Work joyfully. Because you are blessed by God and your blessing comes not by your own right decisions. Your blessing comes not by the hard work of your hands. Your blessing comes not by all the plans and ideas that you have for your life. Your blessing comes from the loving kindness of God. The very God who makes his promises and can keep his promise the very God who promises you all things in his name. You know, ever since our first ancestors, Adam and Eve, fell into sin, it's been hard for us to see work as a blessing. No, instead we tend to measure our blessings by what we can hold in our hands. And yet, the Lord has taught me a lesson and I hope I continue in this lesson and I hope he encourages you as well that the blessings that matter come from his promises. And those blessings never change. And so we work. We work for the Lord. And in everything we do, we trust that God gives it success as he plans, according to his will, according to his desire. And we trust that he will never let us down and that even though our life may go a direction that we do not intend it to go, the Lord is with us to bless us and keep us. The Lord is with us all the way. And so, my friends, work. Work in the blessing of the Lord. Serving wherever he has placed you, with your best, the things that God has placed in your hands, serving with the trust that whatever God has promised you, all those things 
that God has promised you, he will certainly reward you both now and forevermore. Amen. Please rise. And now the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We join now in confessing our common faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will now join in the responsive prayer of the church as found in your service folder on page 10. Lord God, our maker and preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. We are not worthy of all the mercies you show us. You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, terrors of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Heal those who are sick, cheer those who are sad, calm those who are distressed, and comfort all who are old and infirm. Bless our land our people and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and our schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations, that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. Eternal Father, you alone make the decisions about life and death, and so we implore your mercy today and always on Merle. As the sickness seems to have grown within him and he grows weaker each day, be with him. Comfort him with faith assurance that you are with him and that he need not be overcome with fear. Spare him from extreme physical pain. Encourage him and his loved ones with the sure hope of the glory that you have prepared for your believers in heaven. Into your hands we commit him and all those whom you love, O Lord, our Redeemer. Amen. And now hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. We bring these requests to you in the name of Jesus our Lord and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. We give ourselves to you that we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Amen. And now we join in saying the prayer our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for our next hymn, hymn 477. Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation and bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve your Lord with gladness. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated for our closing hymn. Note for those who might be following along in a hymnal if you have one at home, it's the melody to 320 and not 319. Same words.
morning again. What a pleasure and blessing to worship with all of you today. I don't believe I have any announcements other than to highlight that we will be having Bible study at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings. If you can't join us in person, please do consider joining us via Zoom. If you need that link, I can resend it out. I'm also recording those, so if at the end of this, if you're interested in hearing what we've had to say about Ecclesiastes, I can also give you the recording of those Bible studies for you to watch in your own time. So unless I've missed something else, the Lord be with you till we meet again.